I said, empty your mind. Be formless, shapeless. Hey, have y'all heard Bruce Lee's lost interview with Pierre Burton? If you had, did you catch the part where Bruce Lee low-key dissed Tai Chi? Well, it's a kind of a slow form of exercise, which is called Tai Chi Chuan. I'm speaking Mandarin just now. Yeah. It, Cantonese, Tai Chi Kun, <laughs> okay? He said it was an exercise for the elderly, like a health dance, but not a martial art. It's more of an exercise for the elderly, not so much for the Give young. Give me a demonstration. Show me. Can you do it? Now, you can make the excuse that maybe Bruce Lee just didn't know much about internal martial arts, but he knew. All you have to do is look at his notes. Bruce knew exactly what he was doing because, well, he wasn't a big fan of Tai Chi. And I'm going to tell you guys five reasons why Bruce Lee actually hated Tai Chi at one point in his life. What's up, y'all? My name is Prince, and this is Golden Bell Training, where it's my goal to help you all become better martial arts athletes. We're continuing with our interesting facts about Bruce Lee series, where I'm going to give you guys five reasons why Bruce Lee hated Tai Chi. Now, really quick, I want to backtrack a bit and tell y'all how this topic got on my radar. So every two to three years, this story will resurface about this secret recording of Bruce Lee's phone conversations with his student, Daniel Lee. One of the things they discussed is this fight that happened in Macau that could be considered the first Tai Chi versus MMA exhibition fight. In that fight, 53-year-old Tai Chi master Wu Gong Yi fought Chen Kafu, a 34-year-old practitioner of White Crane Kung Fu, Judo, and Boxing. Like I said, this could be considered the first Tai Chi versus MMA fight. The fight was called in the second round after the Tai Chi master broke the MMA guy's nose and the MMA guy bloodied the Tai Chi master's lip. The fight would go on to change the attitude towards studying Kung Fu in Hong Kong at the time. And it's what started all of the rooftop battles that you hear so many Bruce Lee fanboys brag about when the topic of Bruce Lee's non-existent fight record comes up. Like I said, this story comes up every two or three years, and ever since Xu Dong knocked out Wei Lei and a few other guys who were claiming to be Kung Fu masters, people use this as some claim that Bruce Lee called out all of the fake martial arts people as being cowards, and therefore it's further proof that Tai Chi is a fake martial art. The problem is that Bruce Lee just really didn't like Tai Chi when he was younger, and his dislike started at the very beginning with his daddy issues when he was growing up in Hong Kong. So a few years back, I was having a conversation with one of my Kung Fu teachers, and I mentioned something about wanting to combine internal martial arts with Jeet Kune Do. My teacher quickly dismissed the idea, and he told me that it wouldn't work because Bruce Lee didn't have the temperament for internal martial arts. He went on to say that Bruce Lee's father tried to teach him Tai Chi, but he stopped because Bruce Lee just didn't have the patience. Now, this was the first time that I'd ever heard of Bruce Lee's father, Li Hoi Chin, ever studying Tai Chi. But it turns out that what my teacher said was true. Bruce Lee's father did study Tai Chi. Recall that Bruce was born during World War II and Hong Kong was mostly occupied by the Japanese at that time. This was a rough time to be living in Hong Kong and Bruce's father had not yet made it as a big time actor. It was actually Lee Hoi Chin's refusal to make propaganda films for the Japanese that led him to becoming one of the top actors in Hong Kong after the war ended. Well, when Bruce turned seven, his father began to take Bruce with him to his Tai Chi classes at King's Park. Bruce's father thought it would be good for his health and also as a way to treat Bruce's hyperactive behavior. You have to check out this other video on my Bruce Lee series to get more details on Bruce's bad behavior when he was a little kid. So when Bruce was asked about the morning Tai Chi classes, he said that he enjoyed the time with his father, but he got tired of Tai Chi quickly. He said that it was no fun for a kid being with a bunch of old men as he was getting into more fights with other kids in the neighborhood and at school, so he found Tai Chi useless for the fighting that he was doing. <laughs> Later, Bruce's relationship with his father would not be so good. Bruce describes his teenage years as having an absentee father. Like I said, Li Hoi Chin became one of Hong Kong's biggest actors following the war and the end of the Japanese occupation. With a huge increase in income, Li Hoi Chin took up the hobby that many affluent people had during that time, smoking opium. 
Well, it turns out that one of Lee Hoi Chin's biggest roles was in a play about two opium addicts. So every night that that play was running, Lee Hoi Chin was on stage with one of his best friends getting high for real. Eventually, Bruce's dad would kick his opium addiction, but it really put a strain on their relationship when Bruce was a teenager. As it turned out, Bruce acted out during a public demonstration being given by a Tai Chi master. The Tai Chi master was demonstrating his iron body skill by picking people out of the crowd to punch him in the stomach so that he could demonstrate his ability to take a hard hit without getting injured. Well, Bruce leapt onto the stage to participate in the demonstration, and as soon as the demonstration started, the Tai Chi master raised his shirt for Bruce to punch him in the stomach, but instead, Bruce cracked the guy in the ribs, sending the guy crumbling to the crowd. When Bruce recalled the story later, he believed that he actually did crack that guy's ribs. He said he got tired of seeing those Tai Chi masters leading demonstrations all of the time where they were trying to impress the young guys in the audience. And in a way, the Tai Chi master trying to impress people in the public was a lot like his dad, who had this persona as this big time actor, family man, and a true patriot. But he really spent most of his time at home in an opium bed with a friend or in an opium fueled haze when he was away from the spotlight. So cracking the Tai Chi guy in the ribs in a way was Bruce acting out his feelings towards his dad at that time. <laughs> Well, it was Bruce's acting out and all of the trouble that he was getting into at school, which I discussed in another video, that would eventually result in him being sent to America. Bruce eventually ended up in Seattle, Washington to finish up his high school, and when he wasn't busy with school or working for Ruby Chow in a restaurant, Bruce was hanging out at the Seattle Chinese Youth Club participating in his two favorite activities, dancing cha-cha and studying kung fu. Bruce's dad hooked him up with his friend, Fook Young, to be sort of a mentor to Bruce. Fook Young was also a member of the Chinese opera, and his most famous role had been as the Monkey King. I mentioned in another video that Bruce was a big fan of Sun Wukong as a child. What this meant for Fook Young was that he had to have been an incredible athlete, and he studied a lot of different Kung Fu styles. Under Fook Young, Bruce was exposed to Eagle Claw, Praying Manis, Red Boat Wing Chun, and Taiji Chuen. Now of those arts, Bruce was more fascinated with Fook Young's praying mana skills and he added the red boat material to his Wing Chun practice. One of the things that Bruce never talked about was Fook Young's Tai Chi skills or how the internal development from Tai Chi complemented those other styles. It leads me to believe that Bruce didn't really understand Tai Chi at that time and he went about trying to develop internal skills by simply working harder at becoming a better athlete. Now, according to one of Fook's students, Bruce spent about seven years learning under Fook. And I'm not sure about that claim, but it's possible that this was under some kind of informal arrangement because at that six or seven year mark, it puts Bruce in Oakland. Now, around this time, Bruce would have had about three schools, one in Seattle, one in Oakland and in Los Angeles that were teaching Jun Fan Gong Fu or Jun Fan Kickboxing. Bruce has made a bit of a name of himself by this time and it wasn't always a good name. What I mean is that Bruce was known to show up at other schools and advertise his school. Sometimes he was even known to challenge the teachers at those schools. Beardy Bruce Lee Central recently posted a video about Bruce Lee showing up at karate dojos to challenge the teachers, but it wasn't only karate dojos where this happened. Bruce also visited a few Kung Fu classes in San Francisco's Chinatown and well, things didn't always work out well for the little dragon. On one occasion, Bruce Lee visited the school of Guo Lin Ying and he was thrown out of the building. I heard about this 13 years ago and the way that I read it was this guy was practicing across the street from a Master Guo school. He said, I'll never forget the time I saw Bruce Lee come flying across the street. And I'm guessing that most of y'all have no idea who Guo Lin Ying is. And if you do, then you probably know me in the real world or one of my friends or teachers from my Tai Chi lineage. My Tai Chi's teacher's teacher, Henry Look, was one of Master Guo's students. Guo was one of those guys who should have a movie about him. I could do an entire video on Master Guo, but I'm trying to keep it simple here. This guy had some Tai Chi skills that were borderline supernatural and his ability to fodge in with pretty much 
any part of his body. Now, if you don't know what I mean by Fajin, just think about the one inch punch. Guo could do that with any part of his body. And it sounds like Bruce Lee may have bumped into Master Guo and got an up close demonstration of Guo's ability to hit with any part of his body. Now this incident with Guo is big because Bruce had this embarrassing situation with Guo, but then one of the biggest events in his life was because of one of Guo's students. So think for a second, besides the movies, Jeet Kune Do, the one inch punch, and all of that stuff that we associate with Bruce Lee, what is the biggest event in Bruce's life that everyone still talks about to this day? That would be the fight with Wong Jack Man. That fight was at the center of two movies, Dragon the Bruce Lee Story and the more recent Birth of the Dragon. I know what most people believe about the fight, but what you heard isn't true. What the movies told isn't true. Bruce Lee didn't fight Wong Jack Man to free a bunch of bar girls from the triads, and they also didn't fight for Bruce to have the right to teach Kung Fu to outsiders. They fought because of Tai Chi. Well, more like because of a Tai Chi student's hurt ego. Remember the name Guo Lin Ying? I literally just talked about how Bruce got humiliated when he was thrown out of his school. Well, Master Guo had a student named David Chin, and David Chin passed last October, and some of my friends actually knew him. I'm saying this because David Chin is responsible for the Wong Jack Man fight. This story could be a video in itself, and it probably will be, but for now, I'll just say that David Chin was so pissed off at Bruce Lee's arrogance that he wanted to respond to what many felt was an open challenge. David wanted to fight Bruce himself, but it was decided that Wong Jack Man would be the person to face Bruce. David Chin actually delivered the challenge letter to Bruce, and he was one of the few people to actually witness the fight. Of the other three people who were involved in setting up the fight, I believe that all of them eventually became Tai Chi teachers. That's if they weren't already studying Tai Chi. And I should mention that Wong Jack Man eventually also became a Tai Chi master in the Bay Area. And the one time I ever read about him talking about the fight with Bruce, he said something along the lines of, uh, Bruce might still be alive had he embraced the training philosophies of the internal martial arts a little bit earlier. I mean, so there you have it. There's five reasons that Bruce Lee hated Tai Chi at some point in his life. Now, I keep saying at some point in his life because here's the thing. When I looked at some of Bruce Lee's published notes, he lists out the pros and the cons of various styles of martial arts. And when he gets to Tai Chi Chuen, he only says that it's an exotic art and he doesn't list any cons. Something else that's a bit of a joke in Tai Chi circles, many of the concepts that Bruce Lee fans think came from Bruce Lee's Jeet Kune Do can actually be found in the Tai Chi principles. And the most important point is this, for all of the talk about how forms are dead and a waste of time, Bruce Lee practiced Tai Chi forms that he learned from his father every day according to Dan Inosanto. So I think Bruce had a love-hate relationship with Tai Chi Chuen. But as he became a father and grew a little bit older, he grew to appreciate the art a little bit more. Running water never grows stale, so you gotta just keep on flowing. And real quick, I've had a lot of people asking me to comment on this cocaine letters thing that were uncovered not long ago. I started working on that video, but I have some other videos that I need to finish first. So give me about a week or two because I have some interesting stories to tell around Bruce Lee's death and how it relates to the cocaine letters. And if you're watching and I've already have that video up, well, hey man, go check that video out. What are you waiting for? Also, if you haven't seen the video on how William Chung was the reason why Bruce started training Wing Chun, you might want to check that one out too. But hey, y'all keep training, remember to breathe, and I'll see you on the next video.